Welcome everyone to this health and wellness session from IGD. Today we're delighted to share our latest shopper and retail research on how COVID-19 is reshaping the health and wellness agenda. My name is Laura Jacobson and I head up IGD's Retail Insights team for the UK market and I'm joined by my colleague Lucy Ingram. Hi everyone, thanks Laura. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the methodology behind the research and then Laura's going to give you an overview of the six hypotheses. When building the foundations to our hypothesis, we started by reviewing existing research. This included academic literature on past pandemics and recessions, the latest consumer insights at a global level, and also our ongoing UK shopper tracking. Secondly, we ran a series of industry roundtables where we talked to a range of commercial and technical experts from retailers, manufacturers, caterers, and the out of home sector. Thirdly, we thought formulated our hypotheses. And whilst doing this, we considered what the short and long-term implications of these would be and tested them out with various stakeholders, spanning retailers and manufacturers to make sure that our ideas aligned with theirs. In today's presentation, we'll be bringing these hypotheses for what health and wellness looks like in the new normal to life with retail case studies from across the globe. Back to Laura. The six hypotheses focus on holistic health, affordability, connection with food, employees and wellness in the workplace, obesity and sustainability. The first thing that might strike you with these is that it's very much an evolution rather than a revolution. And while there might be some direct uh, reactions and some very interesting shopper and consumer behaviours in response to COVID-19, many of these were broader trends already very firmly on the radar beforehand. So what we're seeing is new levels of interest and new levels uh, and new and different solutions emerging. I'm now going to hand over to Lucy to talk you through the first three. Thanks, Laura. Our first hypothesis that interest in holistic health will increase won't surprise you. Even prior to the crisis, we know that shoppers were talking more holistically about health, but we've seen this really escalate as a result of the events of this year. For example, 63% of adults now say it's more important to be active compared to before the coronavirus crisis. We've also seen a huge increase in sales of multivitamins and products with immunity claims. Sales of vitamin C at Superdrug have tripled year on year. Because of what we've seen so far, we strongly believe that health will become a bigger focus for people and also that it will become broader. We also believe that people will prioritize their health and self-care going forwards and that this will impact the way they live their lives and the products or services they buy into. Businesses that help support shoppers do this are going to be really well placed. To illustrate where we've seen this already, we have a great example from Canada, where one supermarket is offering a holistic health package by engaging with shoppers online. Shoppers Drug Mart has released a free mental health programme for those struggling with stress. It's a completely virtual service in partnership with Silver Cloud Health includes various programs that are personalized to the individual and these are really quite complex and involve a mixture of cognitive behavioral therapy, positive psychology and mindfulness. Holistic health obviously includes many areas such as mental health as I've just spoken about and it also includes healthy eating which we can see from this Shopper Vista research means many different things to different people. Here we can see a broad spectrum of what shopper, shoppers think healthy eating means. It ranges from 36% of shoppers thinking eating more healthily means increasing fruit and veg intake, to 6% thinking it means eating foods to support gut health. It is this breadth that means shoppers can find it difficult to navigate health and wellness, and anything that retailers and suppliers can do to help guide the shopper through the store and highlight product differentiation to make the shopping journey easier will be a real benefit to their consumers. We're seeing retailers respond to this broadening interest in health by evolving stores to be more mission focused to help shoppers navigate. For example, Holland and Barris, Barrett's latest store concept. The store layout is really easy to navigate with different zones and clear signage, making it easier for shoppers to find what they're looking for. For example, due to the spike in demand for immunity products, 
they've prioritized the front of the store with health supplements. And we've seen something very similar with Central Food Retail in Thailand, who recently launched its first health food store in Bangkok. The retailer has classified products under five different categories, organic, natural, vegan and plant-based, health specific and nutrition boost. We've also seen some really great examples of innovation recently under niche missions. Sleep and circadian health is a significant growing wellness trend where everything from lighting to food is becoming an important consideration. We expect the increased stress that shoppers are under to accelerate this trend further. One in three have found sleep has been negatively impacted by lockdown. Night Food Ice Cream, which was launched in 2019, is a really interesting product. Not sure how keen you'd be on trying an ice cream that's designed to help you sleep. Or how about these very newly released teas from Mood, which are designed to help support you throughout different times during the day. But of course, one of the most important questions is whether or not this will stick. Our most recent Shopper Vista research shows that most shoppers have positive future health intentions, with 55% saying they're going to make changes to their diet for the better. There is also still a lot of motivation to exercise more at home, with 49% of shoppers saying they are going to do this. Now, where are the opportunities for you in holistic health? There's lots of opportunities to help shoppers maintain their holistic health. They will be looking for inspiration, particularly as we head into winter and the second wave of the pandemic. With restrictions once again increasing, maintaining a healthy lifestyle at home will be front of mind for many. Therefore, for suppliers, there's opportunities to deliver on total health with a wider range of products, particularly focus on, new, on newer health missions such as immune support. With shoppers defining healthy eating in different ways, there is also opportunity to help them navigate health and wellness differentiation and clear communication of product benefits. So, on to our second hypothesis. Affordability will challenge health priorities. Unfortunately, many shoppers are already struggling financially, and this means that affordability is going to become a key focus for some. And this can often override good intentions and desire for health. We know from our latest Shopper Vista research that shoppers have negative perceptions around the affordability of eati eating healthily, with 69% believing eating unhealthily is more expensive. Eating healthily, sorry, is more expensive than eating unhealthily. 64% of shoppers believe that there aren't enough offers on healthy foods, and 55% think food companies don't care if people eat healthily. The real challenge going forwards is how to shift these perceptions. We've seen some great examples of promotional activity to encourage healthy eating. A real standout this year was Sainsbury's great big fruit and veg challenge. This was run for a month. Uh, shoppers were rewarded with nectar points for eating more fruit and veg. They, uh, the tracker sets personalised targets based on users' typical shopping habits rewarding customers who increase their intake of fruit and vegetables in store and online with three different labels to compete. So it's got gamification, it's all very digital and makes it really exciting for shoppers. Delays in Belgium also offers a 5% discount when purchasing Nutri-Score AB products. We've also seen retailers encouraging scratch cooking through promotional activity. Albert Hein in the Netherlands has five recipes on its website each week showcasing ingredients on promotions and these are branded as its bonus kitchen. So there's a real opportunity for industry here to help drive health through the value proposition. Evolving promotions to reflect the economic climate and to champion health will help change the perception that healthy, eating healthier is more expensive. Influencers like Joe Wicks and Jamie Oliver will continue to demonstrate how to cook healthy meals on a budget and optimise ingredients, keeping shoppers interested in scratch cooking. Finding new and inspiring ways to maintain this interest will be important. Making it easier for shoppers to eat healthily will also really benefit those who are struggling with lockdown cooking fatigue. 
now. On to our third hypothesis. We will feel a greater connection with food. One of the biggest challenges our industry has experienced is the shift in the way people plan, purchase and prepare their food. This enforced disruption has helped us return to a more traditional way of life, shopping less frequently, cooking more from scratch, baking at home and even, sit, even sitting down together at mealtimes. In fact, 42% of people say the out outbreak has changed how they value food as an essential. With food becoming such a focus, shoppers will emotionally connect with what they eat and how it is grown. This could lead to a desire to better understand products and place greater value on the food that we eat. Our Shopper Vista research has revealed shoppers are cooking more and being more experimental. So 37% have claimed to have cooked from scratch during the lockdown and 51% have tried new recipes. There's also more multi-generational eating together with 49% of health souls with children eating together more. And different eating times are becoming more important with 19% of shoppers saying they're eating breakfast more frequently. With the large increase in scratch cooking, there's lots of opportunities to help shoppers do this. Tesco's Food Love Stories campaign has been running for many years, sharing real stories of shoppers cooking to inspire others. The campaign runs in store and online and gives shoppers recipes that can be cooked quickly and easily and focuses on healthy eating. And this has recently been expanded to its Let's Cook initiative with quick recipes for home cooking. This is necessary at a time when many of us will be feeling mealtime fatigue after many months of being locked down and will be really seeking out some inspiration for cooking new dishes. We're definitely seeing a stronger focus on localised production and sourcing. All major retailers in France are focusing on supporting local producers and farmers more than ever before. Priority is being given to fruit and vegetables and assortments are being flexed to add new products such as cheese and meat. Leclerc has a long-term campaign called Local Alliances and this identifies different products with local labels so that shoppers can see where the products come from, making it easier for them to support their local producers. Now, where are the opportunities? As shoppers continue to grow more, connected to their food they eat and where it comes from, there is opportunity to highlight the value of food, planning meals and meal times. With increased support for farm shops, milkmen and small local businesses, showcasing provenance will help shoppers feel more connected to your business. Also, emphasising the emotional connection with food will help to drive connections with shoppers and foster loyalty. I'm now going to hand over to Laura and she's going to talk you through the last three of our hypotheses. Thanks, Lucy. So the three hypotheses I'll cover focus on broader kind of societal areas, starting with employers will place wellness at the heart. This hypothesis really focuses on the importance of employee health and wellness. And it stems from the fact that, um, you know, those working in the food and consumer goods industry are really widely recognised as key workers and celebrated as hashtag food heroes. And we can see from our shopper confidence statistics at IGD that the trust in our industry is at an all time high. Over the last few months, we've had lots of stakeholder conversations with people in job roles across the industry. And what they've confirmed is that employee health is and continues to be an increasing priority. Some of you have been offered mindfulness sessions, virtual gym classes, or even gift vouchers to spend on things that make you happy and make you feel well. There are also business continuity reasons for supporting health, as it's become harder to onboard new members of staff, so nurturing a good strong team is really vital for business survival. In the short term, employers are having to focus on providing a safe working environment, either from home or by using social distancing, PPE, and a number of other different measures. Areas like workplace catering have had to adapt to meet social distancing guidelines, completely changing the food environment and the food offer. And to support their employees in this time of change and disruption, many businesses are reviewing and communicating their broader benefits packages. Many of us, especially office staff, have had to embrace digital solutions and remote ways of working. 
On the whole, we see that employees have adjusted to this new work-life balance during lockdown. So uh, it will hugely impact how employers deliver health and wellness for all equally, with digital playing such an important part, whether these be digital meetings, schooling, exercise. I'm sure many of you will have seen the announcements from the big tech companies, Obviously, I've got Twitter on the screen right here, but Facebook and Google also, who have really embraced this remote agile way of working, either until the end of 2020 or for some it indefinitely. Considering benefits like reduced commute times, lower pollution levels, reduced operating costs and increased morale, a permanent work from home business model may sound to some like the ultimate win. But it will, of course, be interesting to see how health and wellness evolves in the longer term, especially as budgets are constrained. Will offices start off in childcare? Will canteens reopen? We think that employees will start valuing the entire work package more than before, considering flexible working, health insurance and culture, in addition to their salary. There will be increased demand for tools that support employee wellness. Employees will review their broader benefits package and make better use of digital solutions. Where food was previously offered, social distancing measures may remain in place, increasing reliance on vending and grab and go solutions. And finally, employees will reflect on the total package offered by employees to champion work and life balance. Our fifth trend is obesity, remaining a key focus. Three in 10 adults in the UK are now obese and poor diet is responsible for one in seven deaths in the UK. As a major risk factor for coronavirus, unsurprisingly, tackling obesity remains a major focus for the government, for consumers, and of course, for the food industry. Although these statistics are from the UK, obesity is of course a global challenge, and we're seeing retailers and suppliers take a variety of approaches to support shoppers in their goal to overcome it. One aspect I'm going to focus on here is personal health. How can we make guidance feel personal, feel relevant, to help individuals meet their own goals. In the US, Kroger has a wide-reaching suite of activity to help shoppers be healthy. Digital initiatives play a key role here. For example, its OptUp app provides nutritional scoring and food recommendations based on what shoppers buy. So that's really smart and, and really personal. It shows a whole new depth of nutritional information that links to things like previous purchases and allergy information. And the retailer, as well as what it's doing online and in the digital space, also has care stations in store and additional resources on its web platforms. So it's covering all those different touch points across the shopper journey. When Lucy talked about holistic health, she also touched on keeping active. And uh, the example on the right here is from Yumbo in the Netherlands, which has a food coach app which provides personal training plans for customers who frequently cycle or run. Um, so alongside uh, personal training, it also provides a nutritional plan to match with the exercise that they're doing. Another strand to this hypothesis is to do with families and to do with children. Prior to the pandemic, in the UK, the government's obesity strategy focused really heavily on children from areas such as reformulation, various guidelines on advertising, all playing um, a supporting role here. So one initiative in this space that's caught our eye very recently is from US supermarket chain Hannaford. The Hannaford Snack Pals website and app were designed to keep, teach kids the building blocks of healthy eating habits and wellness. And the website features loads of fruit and veg themed games, recipes for inspiration. It's all tailored to appeal to children. And uh, the products that they sell in stores link with the, the, the characters that feature in the, the games as well. So it all loops back in and, and creates a really great user experience. With greater impetus support on health than ever before, again, there are some big opportunity areas here. Personalization and the role of technology is a great way to help offer solutions that cut through with individuals. You know, you've got your phone in your pocket you can set it to settings which are specific for you. It can notify you. There's lots and lots of ways to utilize data to really get very targeted in that space. While obesity strategies are relevant for adults and for children um, alike, helping families we think will remain a particularly hot topic. As I said, don't forget that holistic health trend that Lucy covered first and activity plays a key role here. And finally, consider the many different routes to healthier baskets. 
yes, new products and solutions, but also product visibility, nudge techniques, and so forth. Moving on to our final hypothesis. Now, this is probably the furthest reaching. It spans both health and environmental challenges. And the work being done to overcome these really is helping sustain ourselves into the future. In the long term, this will require significant shifts in how the food system currently operates and delivers. The opportunity lies in changing diets, because if we can empower and enable consumers, they'll help drive the changes required. IGD did a deep dive onto this really interesting and important topic towards the end of 2019, and we revisited it again just after the first lockdown lifted to understand what had changed. So while sustainability might not be at the very top of mind uh, for a lot of people during this very difficult time um, as we work our way through the pandemic, shoppers have been undertaking behaviours that are linked with healthy and sustainable diets. Prior to COVID, shoppers ranked their everyday eating habits as 6.3 out of 10 in terms of how um, healthy and sustainable they thought that they were. So that's gone down slightly, down to 6.0, but it still remains pretty robust. 57% remain open to changing their diet with these ambitions in mind. Again, a slight reduction from the pre-COVID data, but that's still well over half of the population. And interestingly, the motivator behind this, the major one is personal health. So it's, it's health ahead of sustainability um, and environment, which is driving this change, despite the two being so closely linked together. And then of course, we've seen some big swings in behavior during the pandemic. 6% of the population and a staggering 9% of Londoners have tried a veg box scheme or ordered food from a local farm for the very first time. And that equates to 3 million people. So what are retailers and suppliers doing in this space? Communic uh, communicating the steps they're taking to shoppers is an important part of this. So it could be on packaging through advertising or other activity relating to their brands. For example, household brand Ecova has introduced refill stations for washing up liquids and laundry liquids in various locations. And it seems like a really long time ago, but I, I went to visit one of these in Sainsbury's just before lockdown began and was really impressed with how it worked. Another example is Corn introducing carbon labelling earlier this year, and it's due to be on the entire range by the end of 2020. The farm to shop carbon footprint is certified by the Carbon Trust uh, uh, and is a really interesting and clear measure there. But while such pioneering actions are taking place, there is a lot more to be done. Recognition and read across remain particularly challenging. So how can I compare the carbon footprint between products if they're not all using the same measure or in fact if some of them aren't using any measure at all? On the survey of how healthy and sustainable people's everyday habits are and how they rank themselves, non-meat eaters scored themselves particularly highly. In fact, versus that average of, of uh, six out of 10, non-meat eaters rank themselves as 7.3 out of 10. And that score has stayed pretty consistent pre and during COVID. We've also seen an increase in the number of non-meat eaters as part of this data sample, particularly amongst younger people, age 18 to 34. The food service industry has been adapting to tap into this trend for some time. Uh, one example is KFC's development of its vegan range. You can see uh, Beyond Fried Chicken on the screen there from the US. Another thing that KFC is testing uh, is, uh, you know, a fairly divisive topic. One area they're testing is lab grown chicken nuggets. So these are meat, but they're produced in a highly efficient tech led lab based environment where the impact on the environment is greatly reduced. Blended meats is another option. These products partially replace meat with vegetables. They're said to be a healthier alternative to meat and again, more sustainable. Walmart is now stocking Purdue's Chicken Plus, which is chicken blended with cauliflower, chickpeas and other plant proteins. The opportunities that are here for, for this hypothesis lie towards the longer term. So are you communicating your values to shoppers and, com uh, and consumers? This is more than just jumping on the trend. What we're seeing from best in class businesses are reporting progress regularly and opening up aspects of their business to make them more transparent. One way to do this is to work towards certifications like B Corp that are gaining traction. 
there's an immediacy of recognition that comes um, for a company that's part of the movement like B Corp because people are starting to know what that stands for, the principles and how they behave. Of course, there are barriers to healthy eating, um, which, which Lucy mentioned earlier, like affordability and even more so to healthy and sustainable diets. If you're interested in finding out more about these, the research on IGD.com called Appetite for Change is a good place to start to, to understand them. That, that's freely available. You might be focusing on a particular, uh, a particular demographic that's engaged with your brand or your products rather than the mass market to help build credibility and traction in this space. So understanding which retailers have synergies with what you might be doing um, and can best showcase your products will also be really important. How do you reach those that this means the most to and how do you grow that base? Before we wrap up, just six final thoughts to leave you with. Firstly, although we cannot predict the consequences of COVID-19, we know that health and wellness is likely to remain high on consumers' agenda. Supporting shoppers in finding ways to self-care with products and services that deliver on total health will be really important. Two, as challenges to the economy continue, we expect savvy shopping to increase. Offering health on a budget will help shoppers feel that they are not making sacrifices to their well-being. Three, with the potential second wave and increasing restrictions looking likely, shoppers will be looking for ways to innovate in the kitchen to maintain their enthusiasm for scratch cooking. Increased personalization is expected with shoppers looking for tailored solutions to improve health and digital and technology may have key roles to play here. Uh, number five, with obesity still part of the government's agenda and shoppers more likely to be spending more time indoors due to potential increased restrictions and the colder time of year, shoppers will need extra support in helping them eat healthily and exercise. And finally, shoppers are increasingly linking health and sustainability together. Demand is growing for retailers and suppliers to support practices that are good for producers, people and the planet. That concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for listening. We're looking forward to hearing your questions later on and do stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.